Would you rather be covered in fur or covered in scales? Every now and then, you find yourself in a position where you need to pick between two decent keywords. Stick around as we compare several pairs of keywords and show why we would pick one over the other in this episode of The Jam. What is up? I'm Gordon from Marmalade. I'm Richie from Marmalade. And today on The Jam, we're playing a little bit of a game. We're going to play a game of Would You Rather. Uh, and every now and then when you're checking out keywords, you come across two that's like, man, looking at these numbers, I'm really not quite sure which one would be the better one to try out in my shop. And so today we've got, I think, four or five different ones to look at, combinations and, and kind of walk through, you know, what things you should be looking at that might be good indicators that one keyword would be a better one to try instead of another keyword. You ready to do this, Richie? Let's do it. So the first pair of keywords is, would you rather adult onesie or ABDL onesie? So I'm not sure what ABDL Oh, don't act like you don't know ABDL, man. I know that's I, your jam. I really don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, honestly, I didn't know it either. I had to look it up. Etsy is always full of surprises for me, and this didn't disappoint. Uh, it stands for adult baby diaper lovers, which is like apparently a thing where adults like to put on diapers and pretend they're babies and treat each other like babies, and they enjoy that. Got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we look at the specs here. We can see that adult onesie is not a long tail keyword, while ABDL onesie is. Searches is pretty similar between the two with adult onesie having just a hair more. Same thing for engagement. There's a bit more engagement there too, but there's also a whole lot more competition, but it's still green. There's there's 9,000 and almost 10,000. So it's not really, you know, it, it shouldn't scare you away at that point from using that keyword. So when you look at these two, Richie, what are you thinking? Well, what I'm thinking here is I do like the long tail. I like that it is definitely a more niche market. And I mean, the competition's lower, it's still green, uh, too much lower, and I'd be a little concerned that there's not enough variety. Uh, but given the searches and engagement as long tail, I think ABDL onesie is the one I would pick between them, uh, just because it's more niche. I feel like adult onesie can still get more niche down. Yeah, I think you're right. I think this is probably a good example of, you know, why it's important to kind of pay attention to those long tail keywords. People who are out there shopping for keywords that aren't long tail aren't necessarily ready to make the purchase yet, right? So if you kind of target things that are more long tail, you're gonna have more of a chance of people finding you when they're ready to make their purchase. And, and that's when you wanna be found anyway. So I think that does make sense. Absolutely, you wanna be, la be the last search before the sale. So we're going with ABDL onesie on this one, you know? I think that's so. That's what we'd rather do. For a keyword, yes. All right, so the next pair we've got is astronomy jewelry or astronomy gifts. When I found this one and I was looking at astronomy gifts, I'm like, surely this can't be long tail, right? It, it seems pretty vague. It just says gifts in the name of it. But I guess this is still a pretty niche thing. Astronomy gifts must be a pretty niche area inside of Etsy. And so these are both long tail. Again, the searches are pretty similar with astronomy gifts having, you know, a hundred more searches than the other one. Engagement, however, is much stronger on astronomy gifts. You're looking at 1200 versus 300 for engagement, but along with that comes almost double the competition for that one. So how are you feeling on that? Would you target the one that has a, a huge amount more of engagement or would that level of competition kind of scare you away? Well, that kind of depends on my shop and where I'm at sales-wise right now. Uh, so if I was getting started, I would definitely be going with astronomy jewelry and sticking more niche down, less competition. And I'm thinking that I'm going to have more shots at top spots uh, in search uh, getting started because of the lower competition. But that engagement is really enticing. I mean... That engagement is three times the number of searches. So people are going there, they're clicking around. If I'm there to be found, that's cool because they're active. But if I'm buried because of the competition and because I don't really have a sales track record for that kind of keyword, then it doesn't matter because I'm never going to be seen. So if I have a strong shop with strong sales, strong conversion rates, and I think I'm going to get found in search and top spots for astronomy gifts, I'm going with that because I want that engagement. 
Yeah, I like that. I And one of the things you said I think is super important too. When you called out highlighting that difference between engagement and search. So this is something that maybe all sellers might not be aware of, but when you look at that relationship between those two numbers, kind of as Richie was saying, if searches and engagement are roughly the same, it's telling you that when someone makes a search, they're clicking like one listing and then they're leaving, right? Sometimes you're gonna have less engagement than searches and that's even worse because then you see people are searching and then usually they're not even clicking something, they're making a, a different search or, or, or filtering or something like that at that point. But you really want to see something where the engagement is like twice that of searches. Like that's awesome when you see that sort of thing going on because it means people are clicking at least two listings at that point. And here, like Richie pointed out, it's three times higher than searches. So on average, when a person's coming in to search for astronomy gifts, they're not leaving to do another search, they're clicking about three listings before they move on. And I, that's another good indicator, in addition to the fact that it's long tail, that they're interested in this space and that they're shopping around and they're closer to being ready to make a purchase because they're not still in that browsing or searching phase. So the next keywords we're comparing are alpaca print and alpaca gifts. So again, we kind of went with the gifts theme here. These are both long tail keywords. Alpaca Gifts has about 100 more searches than Alpaca Print. We've also got Alpaca Gifts having 300 engagement, while Alpaca Print has 600 engagement. And um, perhaps a more concerning thing is that Alpaca Gifts is around 30,000 competition results, while the other one is at 6,000. So what are you thinking on this one? So I'm thinking that based on these numbers, particularly the competition and the low engagement, that when people are going to Alpaca Gifts, they are going to kind of quickly bounce off of that because they're realizing that it was not a niche enough keyword. It wasn't specific enough for them. Uh, that There's just too many different ranges of things, I'm assuming, made from Alpaca um, as opposed to a gift for your Alpaca, which I guess both of those do have the potential for lots of categories. But it could be alpaca sweaters, could be alpaca socks, could be alpaca mittens, I mean, lots of stuff. So you search that, you see these categories, and you say, ah, okay, yes, that's what I want. I want alpaca socks, that's what I'm looking for. And that's your next one. Alpaca print, that's a little bit more specific. Actually, I don't even know what an alpaca print would be. I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking of like, you know, other animal kind of prints, like cheetah print. And ah. I'm, thinking al I'm thinking alpaca, and I'm like, wait a minute. That, like, lot, like, what is alpaca slash llama print? Like, just kind of looks fuzzy. Like, I'm kind of confused. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm wondering if I misinterpreted that keyword and what it actually means is, like, art. Like, alpaca art. Yeah. So, and that's a good point, right? And that's one of the things where when you do a search in Marmalade, we'll show you a bunch of thumbnails that come back for this. And that would be a perfect way of using that. Uh, if you're like, look, I'm not quite sure here. Are they talking hoof print or are they talking like art print? And so when you see what comes back in those results from Etsy, hopefully it's pretty clear what the majority of things are. And you can look at that and say like, ah, perfect, hoof prints, that's what I'm selling. Or, oh, art prints. Uh, okay, I'm selling hoof prints. Maybe I need to find a different keyword because everyone's going to be finding art prints when they're looking for my Apaka hoof prints. I think one of the key things for this one for me uh, is the engagement difference between the two. Uh, so kind of like we talked about on the last one and that difference between searches and engagement. Here we've got an example where Alpaca print has 103 searches and that's pretty low, like you, it's orange and you would see that and you'd be like, wow, that's not a lot of searches. So you might be scared to use this, but this is why you can't just look at searches. If you're just using searches as a metric, you're, you're gonna have a bad time because searches isn't the same as engagement. Uh, and obviously engagement isn't the same as sales, but engagement is a much better predictor of sales than searches is. And so looking at just engagement here, 600, if I were to compare that against another uh, keyword that had 600 searches and 600 engagement, I mean, they're pretty much the same. I, I, there's 600 engagement between those two things. But in this case, you're comparing searches in there too, and you've got six times the number of engagement as you do for searches. So you've got people clicking six things on average. I mean, that's, that's an awesome ratio right there. So that right there is gonna kind of pull me into alpaca prints. And it's lower competition. So that's pretty win-win. I agree with you there. Yeah, Alpaca Print wins this one. I wanna take a moment to thank you for tuning in to the Jam by Marmalade. Marmalade helps guide you to keywords that real Etsy shoppers are using. 
so you can get more sales doing what you love. Check out Marmalade in the link in the description or at M-A-R-M-A-L-E-A-D.com. All right, so then the last one we're looking at here, we're gonna stick with the print theme, octopus print and octopus painting. So let's dig into both of these here. Octopus painting is a long tail while octopus print is not a long tail. However, octopus print has 500 searches while octopus painting has only 100. There's also only 113 engagement for octopus painting while there's 984 for octopus print. And looking at competition, there's about 14,000 for octopus print and 5,000 for octopus painting. So in this one, if you ignore the long tail, the numbers actually seem to be a whole lot better for octopus print. Now the question is, how important is it to me to be using long tail keywords? If I only had one spot left in my tags and I needed to target one of these two things, which one should I go with? Do I go with the one that seems to have better numbers but isn't long tail or is long tail super duper important and I should kind of take a hit on the numbers a little bit? What are your thoughts? Ooh, uh, I mean, it depends on what the rest of my keywords look like on this one. I don't think I'd make a core strategy around octopus painting at this point just because there's not a lot of searches and engagement, right? So, I mean, if you have like a 3% conversion rate, then you're gonna get three sales based on, you know, the engagement based on the clicks there, but you'd have to get 113 clicks. So given that this is over the next month for the whole keyword, it's gonna take me a while. So we're probably looking at less than a sale a month from that. Octopus print in that case, I mean, competition is still green. It's a lighter shade of green. It's going toward more towards yellow, but I'm gonna assume that I've got a shop that, that that's still gonna be okay with, and I do like that engagement. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. And I think this is a really good example of not getting too caught up in making sure that you're hitting all of the, the marks for all of your keywords here. Obviously, we all want to strive for green. And if octopus print came back as a long tail, uh, that's an awesome indicator. And this is kind of almost a no brainer at that point. Um, but you know, looking at this, you kind of have to step back and say like, look, these, these other numbers are really good. I'm kind of weighing all these things against each other. Um, and like Richie's saying, it depends on what other keywords you're using on your listing and what you've had success targeting in the past, but you don't always have to hit everything. Even though this isn't coming in as a long tail keyword, shouldn't necessarily scare you away from using this one. You know, you're looking again at that relationship between searches and engagement, and you've almost got double engagement as you do for searches. So that's a strong thing right there. Now, let me ask you here, Richie. So given that Octopus Print has almost double the amount of engagement related to their searches, what if the other one had four times as many engagement as searches? And the engagement now is up at like maybe 400 instead of 100. Are you looking at that relationship? It's still less, right? You're looking at 400 engagement versus almost a thousand engagement. Is that gonna sway you in that direction because it's long tail? Or are you still sticking back with octopus print in that case? I think I'm gonna start getting swayed there. You know, the competition's a little bit lower, the number's looking better, it is long tail. Um, I, I'd start to get swayed a little bit. That'd make it a much tougher decision uh, about which one to go with. And ultimately I'd try to use both, if not necessarily on that listing, but these would be both going on my list for either the same listing or if they're appropriate, another listing um, and use them in tandem. I mean, that's kind of the, the perfect way to tie things up here is, is use both of them. You know, obviously that's kind of like the lazy answer. We're trying to pick between these keywords, but that's the true answer in a lot of cases is that you could use both. You, you If you can't fit them both on the same listing at the same time, use them on two different listings, or try one of them, you know, put them both into a keyword list, try one of them, give it a while on your listing and check your Etsy stats, see how much, which traffic you're getting from that actual keyword or from combinations of that keyword to know if it's working for you. And if it is working for you, that's fantastic. Maybe you want to leave it on there and, and maybe swap out a different keyword. But if it's not working for you, pull it off of there and put octopus painting on there in its place and check your stats again after a couple weeks and see how that's working. That's always the best thing to do is try it out and then see if it works inside of your shop. Marmalade can do a good job of showing you which ones are better ones to try first. And so you're not wasting your time on keywords that might not perform for you, but it's still always best to try them out and see how well they work for your actual shop and your actual listings. Everything is different. 
Right. And keep in mind that everything is not necessarily going to be immediate. So when we're talking about a forecast, especially, which is what you're seeing here, and you have seasonal kind of things, you want to make sure that you don't throw keywords on today, check it in four days and be like, hey, it's not working. You're throwing in the towel before you've actually given the keyword a chance to ramp up. Right. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you understand, is this a keyword that I'm expecting to be hot right now? or something that a couple weeks from now is when I'm really gonna start seeing the results of it. So there you guys go. We went through a couple of, of pairs of keywords for you there. If you've ever been in that situation where you've got two keywords and you're really kind of hemming and hawing between the two of them, this could be hopefully helpful to you in figuring out, you know, how to look at the numbers, how to make sense of them, and how to pick keywords that have a better shot at bringing your shop success. And we will see you guys next time on The Jam.